Good morning and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Brad and I'm a pastor here at Blaney Community Baptist Church. I'm going to open us in prayer as we begin our service. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your grace. Lord, as we come here to worship, to sing praise, to learn from you, to fellowship, Lord, I pray that you'd open our hearts and minds to hear from you and that our motives would be about communing and connecting with you and learning from you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to worship through song as we sing Mighty to Save. So let's sing together.
Father, you truly did conquer the grave. You overcame sin and death. Lord, you made a way that we might be saved through Jesus and the forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you for that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to continue to sing by singing Build My Life. So let's sing together.
What a wonderful declaration that when we put our trust in Jesus, we can't be shaken when we rely on him and when he fills us and is with us in our lives. We're now going to continue to worship through our tithes and offering. If you'd like to give, you may give to the account below, but let's just pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for how you watch over us. We thank you for your blessing and how our needs are met. Lord, we pray that as we give, Lord, you would give us hearts that recognize that all good and wonderful things come from you. Lord, that we we are given our gifts and talents in our lives to, to earn income, to have jobs. And Lord, as we give back, Lord, we are recognizing our need for you. And so Lord, as we, we give these, we pray that they would be used to further your kingdom. We pray that the, the gospel message would be, be shared to our community and then around the world. We pray that people would be discipled here um, at Blaney Community Baptist Church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just welcome you all once again. My name is Pastor Brad, if you're joining us for the first time. And I just wanted to let you know of a few things that are going on. So we have received confirmation now that we'll be able to have church in person next week. So if you would like to join us at church in person next week, we'll also stream it online for those who aren't able to make it. Uh, but it'll be nice to, to see each other again. I know it's only been one week this time, but I, I, I'm miss, I definitely enjoy being in person more. So just a, a reminder that on the, the 5th of December, we are having our church AGM. So that'll be after the church service on the 5th of December. And over the next two weeks, we'll be collecting nominations for for church council and so if you have somebody you'd like to nominate I, I sent an email out with the the list of the members who are able to to be nominated so if you would like to get a nomination to amanda Stu, or myself and we will um, take those names and pray pray about them and then meet with the people um, but that, if you could have those to one of us by the 31st of October, that would be great because it's time to contact them and then get the names before the church um, in the lead up to the church AGM. Also, I'd like to remind you that on the 19th of December, we'll have our church Christmas meal, uh, Christmas dinner. So put that on your calendars and that'll be a, a wonderful time of celebrating together in December the 19th. Now going to have a time of prayer, and Val is going to lead us in prayer, so I'm going to turn it over to Val now. Good morning, everyone. Let's draw near to God in gratitude and joy. We recognize you are a God of love. We thank you for giving your son Jesus as a sacrifice for the whole world. Dear God, our world is hurting and broken. We pray for those who have lost loved ones this week. Please comfort them in their grief and loss. Cover them with your peace and presence, as only your spirit can do. We know that, it, that in whatever we face, you are our peace and refuge, a very present help in times of trouble. Thank, thank you that you remind us throughout your word we do not face storms alone, but you are always with us, whispering calm, speaking peace and bringing rest to our soul. In this time of uncertainty, we confess your need for you. We ask you to forgive us for trying to figure everything out on our own, for not trusting that you are more than able and powerful to work on our behalf. Forgive us for picking picking back up what we already determined to lay down at your feet. Give us the ability to trust more. Give us a heart that finds rest in your presence. Give us the wisdom to speak peace and pursue it, remembering it's only to be found in you alone. Thank you for your, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that we do not have to walk in fear or live in overwhelmed cycles of worry and stress. 
We pray for our church family that are suffering, for those of us with family who are struggling with ill health, particularly thinking of Kim's friend recovering from brain surgery. Please give her a peace. Please give them strength. For those finding it difficult in making a decision for COVID vaccinations, help us all to understand that it is a personal choice and only you know our hearts for our choices. We pray for the children of our church that they may understand your word so they can apply it to their young lives. We pray for their parents as they nurture them in everyday life. Father, we thank you for Brad, for the time he takes to teach and pastor us, for his comforting words and community sharing. Be with him as he spends time visiting and coming alongside those who need support. Lord, please guide our every step and help us to be attentive to your loving direction. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, Val. We're going to now open God's word. And as we, as we do, today we're, we're looking at the topic of submission to God. As we, as we think of the word submission, a lot of times that's not a, a word we really like. We, we don't like to be in submission. We like to be in control and be, be the one that is in charge. But we are called to to be in submission to God. And we're going to be looking at James chapter 4, verses 4 through 10. So if you've got a Bible, you can join along with me in James chapter 4. Otherwise, you can follow along on the screen. So James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he is jealously, that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before, before the Lord, and he will lift you up. So as I said, submission's not a, a word that we a lot of times like. You know, I want to be in control of my own life. I want to be in control. Um, many people prefer to be their own boss and try to have be self-employed because they don't want to, to answer to somebody. But when it comes to our faith, when we become a believer in Jesus, we are called to submit to God. And as we, we read through these, these passages, it, it talks, us, talks to us about submission. And when we are in submission to God, we can't be double-minded or we can't have our, our foot in the things of the world and then try to still be with God. Um, we're going to just kind of walk through this. Verse 4 says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. When we become a believer and a follower of Jesus, you know, we make a, a covenant with God through faith in Jesus that we um, repent of our sins. We receive and ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we Get, get made right with God. We we are committed to to live for Him, and so that's that that covenant, similar to to the covenant we make when we get married. A, a husband or wife make a a covenant together in marriage, and as a married couple are called to remain faithful to to 
to love each other, to have a, a relationship with each other that they don't have with anybody else. And when somebody is unfaithful, they, they commit adultery. They, they, they go against that covenant, the commitment that they've made to that person. And as a believer, there, there are many places in the, in the gospel that, that or sorry, in the Bible that talks about how we, we are in a relationship with God, like a, a marriage. We, we are his people. We, we talk about the church being the, the bride of Christ. And so when we have committed to him, we are in a relationship with him. We, we are just like a marriage relationship. We are, are committed to him alone. And so verse four talks about when we are a friend of the world, a friend of the world, we become an enemy, enemy of God. And we are essentially being adulterous to God because we're no longer remaining faithful to him. I just want to talk about, you know, being a friend of the world. What does that talk mean? Uh, when it's talking about a friend of the world, that's not saying that we can't be friends with non-believers. The Bible is very clear that we are to witness and to, to share and be an example for people who aren't believers. So it's not talking about a, a person. It's talking about the world, the sinfulness of the world. We are called to forsake those things so that we can be committed to God, to, to seek to, to rid our lives of sin. And yes, there are still temptations. Yes, we still make mistakes, but we are, are to not be a friend of the world. We should, should um, hate those things that pull us down, that pull us away from God, um, because they cause us to, to be unfaithful to him. Verse five says, or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? So as Brad, as you, you know, we are a physical, you can look at the screen, you can, you can see me, I can't see any of you right now, but we have a, a physical body, but we also have a spirit, a spirit that God Put into us that spirit of life and he breathed that into us and that spirit inside of us god is jealous for that he is jealously longs for the spirit inside of us to to be back in that right relationship with him i think of it a little bit like this uh, for those of you who um, are married or have been married when you first met that person you just you longed to be with them you wanted to spend time with them hopefully that's still the case for those of you who are married that you still desire and want to be with them the same way God's spirit is jealously longing for um, our spirits to be in that right relationship with him he wants to be with us he wants our spirit that is dwelling in us to be in communion and in a relationship with him he doesn't want us to be back into the world or be um, separated from him through the sin that can ensnare us to that tries to pull us down because when we as it said in the previous verse when we are a friend of the world when we're letting the things of the world into our life that is going to cause us to be separated from him he longs with jealousy to be um, for our spirit to be right with him in verse six, it says, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. But what, what a, a wonderful verse here. He gives us more grace, grace that we need, grace that we don't deserve, but because of his love, he shows that grace to us. And when we are made right, as we continue through the verses, we're going to see that, that repentance of, of being wanting to be washed of our sin. When we are made right. He shows grace to us. And he opposes the proud, but shows favor on the humble. What this is saying is, you know, the proud a lot of times can't admit when they're wrong. When the, the things go, go um, 
not the way they want, they're, they're not willing to admit it. And when they've done something wrong, they, they're too proud to admit it. I don't know if you've ever met somebody who just never would admit that they had done anything wrong. There's that pride. But when we humble ourselves, he shows favor to the humble. When we are humbling ourselves, going before God and saying, God, I've messed up. I need to get right with you again. I, I, I don't want to let these things of the world, the, the busyness, the, the, the pleasures that the world has, that try to pull us from being faithful to God. But we humble ourselves, go before him. He gives us more grace. What a, a wonderful promise here as we, we humble ourselves and go before him. Verse 7 is, is really the, the, the key verse here that, that we are called to do. And it says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We are called to submit to God. When you think about submission and being submitting to somebody, really that's, that's a choice. We, we can't force submission you know we we can force compliance we can force people to to follow what we say but we we can't um force submission that that is given um you know when we are submitting we are, are yielding ourselves to another we're yielding what we want or we're, we're looking towards that other person when I was in high school, a few friends and myself and my brother, we, we decided we, we'd learn how to wrestle. So we started taking a, a few wrestling lessons to, to learn how to wrestle. So we'd go, uh, we'd sweat a whole lot, do a lot of really um, difficult things. We'd, we'd, we'd leave exhausted, very, very tired and, and smelly from all the working out. And and this was to, to learn how to wrestle. And it, most of it was just exercises. We didn't really, we were just new to it. And we didn't stick with it for real long. I, I learned that we were supposed to, you know, lose a bunch of weight and, and be, not eat the, the, the sweets that I like to eat. And so I didn't stick with it for real long. But as we, we did this wrestling, when you, when you compete against it, we, we, we didn't do it much in the class, but we decided to do it. Um, for fun afterwards, and we would wrestle each other. And the idea of wrestling is you try to get somebody in a, a submission hold. So you're holding them in a way that they can't get out. But even though it's called a submission hold, you can't make them submit. They have to tap out. And so when we wrestle each other, you know, you grip each other, try to twist each other, try to pull each other's arms and, and, and hold them in a way where they can't get out or trying to make them submit. But the thing with that is you can't make them, you can't make them submit. You had to tap out. And so it just, it would keep going until that person, um, the pain got too much or whatnot. And, and they, they, we would choose to tap out. And when you do that, just tap on the ground or you say yield. And then as soon as you say that, it just, it ends immediately. But that that submission came at the, the choice of, of the person who was um, usually losing. And, but that was given by the, the choice of the person. And it couldn't be, um, you know, I, you couldn't just make somebody do it because they, if they didn't want to submit, what would happen? You could eventually, you know, break their arm or dislocate an arm or or if you had a, a you know, a hold around their neck, they, they pass out. But submission was the choice of that person to do it. And in the same way, God, when we when it comes to submitting to God, it has to be our choice. So we have to willingly um, say, you know what, God, no longer am I going to do it my own way. I want to submit to you. I, I do it willingly. It, it's a surrendering of myself to God, to live for him, to, to follow his ways, to live on the path of righteousness, not on a, a path of the world that, that we talked about in verse four, the, the, the sins that, that are there. We are called to submit to God. And it says, the second half of this verse is resist the devil and he will flee from you. When we think of Satan, we think of the devil, he is pulling us back into the world. He's trying to get us to do 
the things that are contrary to God's word, contrary to God's plan for our lives. And so when we submit to God, we are to resist the devil, that pull that he's trying to get us to, to come back to the, the things of the, the world. So we are to submit to God. And we do that willingly. God doesn't make us do it. It's our, our choice to do it. If he forced us to submit to him, then it's, it's really not a, a, a true submission. We, we do it. Um, because we we see what he has done for us and we want to live our lives for him and also believe there, there is his spirit inside of us that is helping us to do the right thing we are to submit to the lord verse eight says come near to god and he will come near to you wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded there so this is a, a really a, another beautiful verse, you know, the, the idea that God gives us more grace because we, we can continue to at times do the wrong thing and we, we need grace from him. But it, here it says, come near to God and he will come near to you. That beautiful thing that he's just there waiting. As soon as we come near to him, we take that step forward. He's coming near to us. I, I picture a movie where, where two people see each other and they, they, you know, as soon as one person starts running towards them, the other person starts running. They, they just run to each other and give each other a, a big hug. And God's just waiting for us to, to, to take that step, to come towards him. And then he will come near to us and we, we um, can be reunited, be united um, because of his great love and the, the desire of his to, to be with us. The second part of this verse, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We are called to, to, to turn from our sin. And for those of you who, who have become a believer, a, a follower of Christ, we, when we became a believer, we, we believed in Jesus. We believed in what he did. We put our faith in him. We received the repentance, or we repented of our sin. We received the grace that he has given us. And we were made righteous because of what Jesus had done. And so we, when we sin, we need to go before God and to, to, to be washed, to be made clean. So as, you know, Baptists, I know if you were a Baptist church, we don't always put a high value on like continual confession, you know, of, of acknowledging our sin and then asking God to, to forgive us. But the confession of our sins, going before the Lord, washing our hands, purifying our hearts are something that we do need to continually do for God. That's not to say I, I'm going to set up a confessional where everybody comes up to, to the church to confess their sins to me, but we are to confess them to him. We confess our sins to our heavenly father who, who will forgive us, who will wash us clean, who's able to purify our hearts. And it calls us here, you double-minded. You know, that's the idea that sometime we we want, are living for the Lord, we're doing the right thing, and sometimes we we aren't. Sometimes the, the sin comes creeping back in, that we allow Satan to, to pull us away from doing the things that we we know are right. And so we need to confess confess our sins. Verse 9 says, grieve, mourn, and well, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. This is just showing the seriousness of our sin. Our sin is something that should grieve us, cause us to mourn and well. It should change our laughter into mourning and our joy to gloom as we're dealing with that sin, as we're confessing that sin. You know, there, there, there is joy that comes through forgiveness afterwards, once we're made right, but our sin should grieve us. 
And I think too many times we as believers think, oh, you know, God, God will forgive us. Uh, oh, I made a mistake. God's going to forgive me. And we don't let the sin grieve us. It doesn't, when we do the wrong thing, when we, when we say a sharp word to somebody, when we, when we, um, when we, you know, do the wrong thing or, or, or don't do the things we know we should, those things should grieve us. Should we are within us and God's spirit should be working in our lives in a way that we know that it's wrong and we grieve as a result of that sin and it changes our our laughter to mourning our joy to gloom but luckily that's not how where it leaves us we we know uh, that the bible tells us there's no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus so once we have been forgiven we aren't condemned for our sins so that that grieving and mourning that's that's just for a period Verse 10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. So as we humble ourselves, go before him, submit to him, confess these sins, we allow him to wash us, they grieve our souls because of what we've done, and we, we know we've done the wrong thing. That's a humbling going before the Lord, recognizing our need for him, recognizing that we've done something wrong. And he will lift us up. He will lift you up. He will lift me up. He will lift us up. So that way we're, we're no longer wallowing in the mud. We are lifted up. Right now, Abby is really loving to just be lifted up and be held. And I, I picture that, you know, the, the Lord just comes and he lifts us up. We get wrapped in his arms. And so the, the grieving is now done. He's lifted us up. We are right with him. And then the, the joy comes. Matthew 18, verse 4 says, Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We are to go before him. Just like a child gets lifted up into the arms of the, of the father. We are to be lifted up and we are to, to humble ourselves in the way that we do that. We need him. We, we need his forgiveness. We need his grace because we do make mistakes. And as believers, there, there are, I think, two types of ways to look at this. There, there are the accidental things that we, we do that we just, oh, you know, I, we need to get right before the Lord. And then there's a uh, talking about at the beginning where, where we've really become a friend of the world, where we're allowing um, the world to influence us, to, to cause us to, to live in a way that's not right with God. And we can't be double-minded. We are not called to, to go back and forth, almost like a, a, a pendulum swinging on a clock where one day we're doing the right thing, one day we're doing the right. We're called to be right and submit to the Father. And again, a lot of times submission doesn't come easily because it requires us to yield ourselves, to recognize the authority of another, recognize that we need the Father. So I ask you, are you at times double-minded? Are we double-minded? Yes, I imagine that most of us would say sometimes we are. Sometimes we know, the right thing to do and we do it sometimes we know the right thing to do and we don't do it or we know that there's something wrong and we do it anyways we can be double-minded so are you trying to have one foot in the world to be a friend of the world and then try at other times to be submitted to god james is telling us that if we are truly submitted to the lord we can't do that we can't have one foot in both places. We need to be committed to Jesus, committed to living for him. We are called to, to submit to him and not only submit, but to repent and be made clean from our sin. When we repent, we're, we turn away from it. We, we don't want to go back. It's not just, oh, you know, I lied. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord, tomorrow I lied. Okay, I'm sorry, Lord, I, I lied again. But 
it should grieve us. The repenting is so we're turning away from it, turning to where um, that's no longer something that we want to have as part of our lives. And as we are called to do this, to submit to God and to repent from our sins, so this is from the first time as a believer, when we, we first come to faith. If you haven't come to, to faith yet, this is the time to do it, to, to submit to the Lord, to repent of your sin, to be made right, to be lifted up by him. But that's also something that we need to do regularly as we realign our lives with God, as we at times get too close to the things of this world, and we need to to, to get right with God, turn to him, resubmit to living for him. And this is really a, a daily battle, a daily choice to, to get up. Am I going to live for the Lord in submission to him? Or am I going to live my own way, the ways of this world, the way of sin? Am I going to let the temptation that Satan is trying to do Pull me away from the Lord. Or I'm choosing to submit to my Heavenly Father. To turn from the things of this world. To not let them pull or drag me. And my prayer is that you would too. That we might repent and get right with him. And choose to live in submission to our Father. Let's pray together. Father, we, we just come before you. And Lord, we, we want to be right with you. Lord, I pray that we would repent and be washed of the things of the world, the sin that pulls us down. Lord, wash us clean. Lord, may we know your grace, and you give it to us as we humbly come before you, confessing our sin and our need for you. Father, we thank you that you will lift us up when we do that. Lord, help us to be in submission and live in submission to you and to your word. Lord, I pray for anyone here who is not a believer, that they may get right with you. That they may find the Heavenly Father who, who jealously longs for the Spirit inside of each of us to be right with you, to be in a relationship with you. Lord, help us each day to live in obedience and submission to you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to sing How Great Thou Art, so let's sing together.
Thanks for joining us today. I hope you will leave today challenged to make sure your life is submitted to our loving Heavenly Father who sent Jesus to die for your sins. Look forward to seeing you all in person next week and have a wonderful week and God bless.